Hi, I'm Juliana and today I'm doing a Q&A so you can really get to know me. Um, as many of you know, I'm doing the Part Time YouTuber Academy right now and so I've got a lot of questions from my fellow content creators and I also have a few questions from Instagram so I'm gonna go through all of them on my phone and yeah, I've got a range of different questions from personal ones, um, YouTube, social media related, food related, which I love, and then uh, some questions about Copenhagen and books. Let's get started with some personal questions. So Confucius Me aka Becky asks Where are you from and how many languages do you speak? I was born and raised in Denmark, but my father is half Chinese and half Italian So I'm quite mixed and in terms of languages, I only speak English and Danish and um, I do speak a little bit of German even though I've had it many many years in school, but yeah, so that's that AB Creative Inc. aka Annalise, my dear friend from Amsterdam She asks what are you most passionate about in life? I would say I'm really passionate about making a difference in advocating mental health and sustainability just overall for for all of us to have like a better future and for grandchildren to have a better future too and for all of us to keep in mind to take care of ourselves. Then Sarah asks what does your dream work day look like in the future? I would say my dream work day would consist of working alongside other people, other creatives. Um, I really love that team dynamic and being able to ping pong ideas and collaborate on different projects. I feel like often the most amazing projects come from collaboration and but it would also consist of just like spending some time alone and really dive into creative projects whether that be writing or content creation or anything like that i think i like a mix of both being able to work with different people but also just being very independent and like dive deep into work keegan asked do you think about colors every hour of the day well <laughs> Kind of, yes. Um, I, I do feel like a very colorful person, both in, the, in terms of what I'm wearing and what I like to surround myself with in, in interior design. And I do notice a lot of nuances, even just from nature and going uh, around. And yeah, I think it also comes from working with graphic design and of course, like my background in fashion. So I would say yes to that question. I do notice a lot of colors, even subconsciously, I think. Okay, I just had some food arrive, so I'm gonna continue answering the questions while I eat because I'm really hungry. I got ramen and I also got dumplings, which is my favorite food. Next question is from Bex and she asks, what is your favorite color to wear? My favorite color to wear is probably yellow or orange. I really like blush pink as well. I like wearing red. Kind of the warmer tones, um, I would say. Yeah, and just any like patterns, fun patterns, I really like. Next question is from Sarah. She asked, will you please marry me? Yes, of course I will marry you, Sarah. I've always wanted like an Italian or an Irish wedding. That would be so awesome to be married like in nature. Yeah, I would like that. Then Elena and Antonio wants to know, are you a night owl or a morning bird? I am definitely a night owl. I wish I was a morning bird, but I'm unfortunately not. Um, especially with video editing and things, I um, or even before I started video editing, I uh, I've always felt like I concentrate a lot better in the nighttime. So I usually go to bed around like one or two o'clock, um, and then I wake up around nine. So that's my routine right now. I would ideally like like it to change and go to bed a bit earlier and wake up a bit earlier. I think that would be really ideal because I like the, the idea of having a really early morning and just getting things done and, and uh, enjoying the peace uh, during mornings. Then Elena also wants to know, would you rather have an outdoor garden or many indoor plants? I'd say both. I love my outdoor garden. I love like having herbs and um, harvesting my own fruits. I love fruit trees. I was really fascinated by having a, a cucumber plant um, during the summer. And that was so much fun to pick like small uh, baby cucumbers. I really enjoyed that, but I also love indoor plants. Um, so yes, both for sure. 
And Sony wants to know, what are your goals for 2021? Great question. I have a whole video dedicated to that where I talk through my Notion page with all my 2021 goals. I think the main ones that I've found is to um, one, get this YouTube thing up and running because I wanted to do that for ages, take care of my mental and physical well-being, and then also just like keep learning and dive into different things. Sarah wants to know, if you could tell your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? One thing that I would tell my younger self is to not care about grades as much. I think it's such a shame that we care about um, doing well in tests and things is I, I personally think there's something wrong with the education system because it focused so much about like outcomes and not so much about like the growth mindset I cared so much about high school grades but which actually did not matter at all because I applied for universities in London where I feel like it's much more about like the, the personal interviews which we don't have here in Denmark and then um, during my time in London I cared about grades too but not as much because it was working on the side too um, but i got really good grades in london too but like i don't really have the need for them because i haven't done a master's degree yet i don't think i will actually and so yeah it's just it's funny how you care so much about those things when you're in school but it really doesn't matter when you like apply for jobs because there's so many other factors that uh, are into play specifically for what i want to do it's like what kind of content have you created? What's your portfolio like? It's much more about that. It's not about like the grades itself. Sarah asks, what would be a keystone habit you would recommend for anyone starting a journey in entrepreneurship? Ooh, that's really interesting. Well, I think the easiest and probably the, the one that I would find the most helpful would just be journaling because if you're in entrepreneurship, you always have so many different things you want to do or uh, different to do's and different ideas and so just having a journal and getting all those ideas onto paper even if if they're unrelated to what you do for work or want to do for work um i think that's so helpful i'm gonna try some dumplings dumplings is one of those things that i could eat all day every day one of my goals this year actually is to learn how to make dumplings from scratch I would love that. Antonia asks, how did the pandemic affect you? I also have a video about that that you can check out. It's all about how my mindset has really changed to the pandemic and there's so many key points that I talked about. I think in general, it has made me more grounded. It has made me more introspective. I've uh, started noticing things about myself that I didn't realize before because it was just so wrapped up in what was happening externally. So yeah, being able to not have external distractions had ma really made me um, get to know myself better. Mike asks, what's your favorite place to visit and why? Or if you could blog out a month to go anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? My favorite place to go right now is probably London because I lived there for two years. So there are small things that I miss about the city, like going to the corner shop, store and buying magazines or going to Pratt or walking the streets of Soho and going out and just like exploring the city and seeing how diverse the city is. Yeah, they're, they're very small things that I miss about London um, so that's probably my favorite place to visit if I had to go anywhere in the world then oh, there's so many places that I want to discover I love to go to Japan one day and see what that's like I love to visit California too because I've never been I've only been to New York so yeah other places in the US I think would be really exciting to explore too I also do love Italy where my grandmother was from I think my like Florence is one of my favorite cities. Um, Venice is beautiful too. So yeah, there's so many places that I loved going. Then for more YouTube and social media related question, the first one is from Henrik and he asks, what happened to the positive edge? And for those who don't know, the positive edge is a podcast that I started with my friend Daniel. And we started that in spring last year and we were very consistent with it over the summer. And then it sort of stopped 
And I really loved the concept with the podcast. I think it's great. I was the one who was initially like, we should do this podcast. And so we did and we had a lot of fun with it. The thing that happened was that we started working together too, like outside of the podcast. And we, we've been friends for many, many years, but then we started working together and we did the podcast too. And so we just saw our friendship become very much work related. So every time we would hang out, it would be about work or about the podcast. And it was such a shame because we never really had time to just be friends and be together as friends. And there were other factors involved, such as um, we went a bit, bit overboard with the video format too, because we initially just recorded audio and then we wanted to record it too for YouTube, but then the workload just got so big that it got so overwhelming. I thought so many times about how I could do more with the podcast and kind of relaunch it or how I should go about that but the thing that kind of is stopping me is that I know so many people listen because of the dynamic that Daniel and I had. We had two different perspectives on personal development and it was so fun to have that conflict of interest and, and see how we could um, discuss different topics and really have a really interesting discussion about those things. And I feel like that's the main reason why people listen. So if I had to relaunch it, I would have to think about how I could do it in an entertaining way too um, that people would like but thank you so much for asking that question because when we do podcasting um, you often feel like it's very one-dimensional and you don't, you don't have a common section and you don't really hear what people think about it so yeah I think that's why I started YouTube too because you have that you have the common section you can engage with each other and hear what other people are thinking and sh about these different things that you talk about I hope you find this YouTube channel interesting because I'm talking about a lot of the same things that we talked about uh, on the podcast and who knows what will happen with the podcast but I'll definitely keep it in mind that you liked it and you kind of miss it. Um, yeah, I'll have a think about that. Abhishek asks, for someone just starting out on YouTube, you have a really professional, quality, edited and designed videos. How do you evolve and learn to make these videos? First of all, thank you so much. That really means a lot. I was um, really hesitant going into YouTube because I never knew if um, what I had in mind would be able to translate for on the videos that I want to make and like live up to my creative vision in my head. But yeah, I'm... Um, and that's that's really sweet of you to say first of all i will say that i've worked with graphic design and with content for many many years um, basically since i was 14 when i started my fashion blog back in the days so i do think over time you really do get to um see what works and what you like visually and so i also went to college where i learned about graphic design I, you learned how to use photoshop and illustrator and in design for that matter and i had an amazing graphic design teacher who were always really good at explaining the, the different theories behind fonts and colors the best piece of advice that my graphic design teacher gave me is to she said whenever you'd go on like the london underground tube you just stand there waiting for the train to come and there's no wi-fi connection all there is to look at is the advertisement posters that are everywhere so you literally just stand there and then she said look at those posters and try to dissect the different elements that it's made out of and just think about like how you would make that if you start from scratch so then you suddenly t start to see like okay it's an image and then there's a box and there's text and there's distance between the text here and here and there's like a gradient overlay on top of that i think that was such great advice and you can do the same thing with youtube videos and even magazines i would do that a lot try to see like how the different articles were set up and how they cut out the different images and position them um, on the page. I'd also say just um, take advantage of all the resources that are online. Look at Behance and Pinterest and do some Skillshare classes if you can, if, if you are really interested in going down um, graphic design and thinking about the videos that I've made so far. I think it's mainly my graphic design background that has helped to make it feel very cohesive because I'm, uh, I choose the different colors that I want to use, the different typefaces and um, I do like graphic elements that um, I really like. So yeah, that would be my best advice so far. 
Sarah asks, what is your favorite blog and newsletter? My favorite blog has for a very long time been Chriselle Lim. And she's a fashion blogger. She has an awesome blog. In terms of newsletters, I don't really read that many newsletters, to be honest. The only ones that I can think of is like online magazines. I do follow like Glamour and Vogue just to see what's happening in the market. Hello Glow is another site I like to look at once in a while just to see if there are any like healthy recipes or yeah, what's happening in that space. Alma the City also has quite a good newsletter. But other than that, I, I honestly don't read that many newsletters. Now for food related questions. Elena asks, what is your favorite dessert? Oof. I like a lot of different desserts, but I would say I really like mochi. They're, they're like, they have a really squishy texture. And then I also like um, anything like chocolate related, matcha related. Renee asks, what is your favorite Copenhagen food? Wow. Okay. Um, I don't think Copenhagen has a specific food because Denmark is quite a small country. So it's not really city dependent, but in terms of Danish food, hmm. One that I really like is like Fiskefrikadelle. <laughs> so it's, um, it's kind of like fish cakes, but better. So it's like fish that's mushed together into a bowl and then you would like fry it. And yeah, that one is just really good. It's really good like summer food uh, to serve. We also have quite a lot of Christmas foods, I guess. Um, I quite like Ebleskewer which is a round dough bowl, you could say. And then you have like jam with it and you dip it in that and eat it. So that's quite good. And we have some Copenhagen related questions. And both Abhishek and Claudia wants to know what is it like living in Copenhagen? Um, Abhishek says, it's one of my favorite cities that I've ever traveled to. So peaceful and I can see myself living there in the future. But I know there's a difference between traveling to a place and actually living there. That is so true. Well, I really like living in Copenhagen because it's always so close to nature. And it feels quite small and there's always like lakes to go to. There's always really good walks. You can go around the city. It's not very polluted, which I found London to be quite polluted. Yeah, there's always fresh air. I also like that the city cares very much about being sustainable. It's hard to say what it's like being an expat in Denmark because I know some people have said that it's difficult to make Danish friends because uh, they don't speak Danish. So it's hard to be in that friend setting if you don't speak the nat native language. I personally think that Copenhagen and Denmark in general it's a very international city so um everybody speaks english it's very similar to like amsterdam that's also very there's lots of expats and people coming from outside and uh yeah you won't have an issue to go to any places where they don't speak english because everyone speaks english here i think Claudia also wants to know where else have you lived before i lived two years in london when i did my university degree um, I moved back about three years ago, I think. And then Oliver asks, what is your favorite Irish pub in Copenhagen? <laughs> okay, I don't go to that many Irish pubs. Um, I did do that when I was, I spent a couple of months in Dublin when I was in high school. That was awesome. Um, yeah, I feel like nothing comes close to actually being in Temple Bar and in Dublin and just, yeah, that's like a whole different atmosphere. But I will tell you there is a place. Let me just try to find it. Oh, okay. It's just called the Dubliner and it's right in the middle of the city. I was there a couple of years ago. I've only been there once, but I feel like the whole atmosphere there was what came very close to just being in Ireland. So I have more recommendations for just small cocktail bars and and uh, small hidden gems in Copenhagen that I really like but so yeah that's the, the places that I would usually go out obviously everything is closed right now okay I finished eating and now I'm back on my sofa to answer some more book related questions Sarah asks, what is your favorite book of all time? Ooh, I used to be obsessed with The Hunger Games. I still love The Hunger Games to this day. So it's probably, that series is probably still some of my favorite books because um, it really opened my eyes to how much I loved reading and how much I would like to write books one day, really. 
Uh, I also love Untamed, which I read recently. I read that last year. And I actually have a question specifically about Untamed from Bex, who says, what was your favorite highlight from Untamed? And that's a big one because I feel like there's so many different things that I loved about that book. It's been a couple months since I read it. I read it in November. Um, so it's been a while, but I just remember after reading that, I was so empowered, I was so inspired. Um, yeah, I just love that book and I would recommend every single woman to read that book. So I might do like a separate video on that. There's so many topics that were covered in that book from toxic masculinity to um, how society view women, what women have grown up to be and how we should challenge that. Um, there's so many like great points about self-care and taking care of yourself and creating a life of your own. Glennon Doyle talks about freedom too and kind of finding herself being very introverted and challenging her sexuality, her religion. There's so many things that I could really relate to in this book. And in particular, I thought it was very interesting how she talks about that men, they grow up and if they're really powerful and confident they come across, then people automatically really like them. But for women, it's the total opposite. We want women to feel very insecure and things. And this, it just shows that there's something wrong with that and how we shouldn't we should really be careful how we talk to ourselves and um, how we think about other women too because it's not us, it's like society has installed that in all of us even from woman to woman to suddenly feel very challenged so yeah, I love this book so much um, I highlighted so many different things of like quotes and different things that I definitely want to go back to and just reread now the very last question is from Keegan and he asks if you had to start writing a novel tomorrow, what would it be about? Ooh, great question. So I've thought a lot about this because I do really want to start writing a novel. Um, and it's something that I've, yeah, it's something that I want to do this year, actually, just like start writing, start experimenting with creative writing. It would most definitely be in the young adult genre because that's how I fell in love with reading and that's still the books that I love reading the most. It would probably be about a two-dimensional world that would have a lot to do with personal development and like a personal journey, a female character's personal journey. Um, <laughs> that's what I want to say right now. I also think it would be really fun to make a spy novel with some romance involved and it's set in like a different universe. And so yeah, it would probably be like the sci-fi fantasy genre, but those are the ideas that I have right now. So that was it for my Q&A. This was so much fun. And thank you to everyone who sent in their questions. Leave down below what your favorite dessert is and click this video over here to see more content from me. And remember to subscribe and connect with me on socials. And I'll see you next time. Bye.